Hey guys, Ron here, and I'm just gonna come out and say it. I was wrong. I wasn't a perfect human being, but if you think about it, the most human thing to do is not be perfect. For if I was perfect, I would forsake my humanity. The point is that out of the 500 minutes of talking I've done on this channel, I've been wrong a couple of times. There have been facts that I've given that I thought were correct, but ended up not being so. It's not that I didn't research, quite the contrary. Most of the examples in which I was wrong were in videos that have so much more information than the average video of mine that I was bound to get a few things wrong. But regardless of any excuse, I was incorrect and will relay the correct information in this video. I totally believe that I was able to learn and grow thanks to you guys, since most of these facts were brought to light by polite viewers. And some of these have actually been corrected in future videos, but weren't explicitly called out by myself. Keep in mind that these are all facts that I thought were correct at the time, not mistakes that I made in the script or during editing, because there are a lot of times that I say something wrong that I actually totally knew, but by mistake misread my script. Like when I said that Embor was a combination of Ember and Pig. When it's obviously Ember and Boar, like I, I know what a boar is, it's not an obscure animal. No technical mistakes either, like stats or facts that I just copied wrong. In this video, I'll be mentioning the correct fact first, and then explain my mistake. And I definitely missed a few facts that I got wrong. There are more than 250 videos on my channel, so it's pretty hard to catch them all. Haha, <laughs> you get it? Number 1. Quacksire is not an axolotl. There are a bunch of videos in which I mentioned how Wooper is an axolotl, and in some of them I extended that origin to its evolved form. But here's the thing, the whole point of an axolotl is that it's neotenic, which means that other salamanders grow into their adult stages which look different than their younger selves, while an axolotl keeps its external gills when it grows up and looks cute forever, but Wooper loses its gills upon evolution. That means neither of them are axolotls, but rather normal salamanders, most probably the Japanese giant salamander. Mudkip, while partially based on a mudskipper, is in my opinion more of an axolotl, considering it keeps its external gills and tail fins in its adult stage. Although Wooper is literally named after a marketing term for axolotl in Japan, and its lack of arms is a reference to regeneration in salamanders. So it could be an axolotl, but Quacksire definitely isn't. Number 2. Physical moves don't necessarily make contact. While I technically knew this because I have obviously used Earthquake a bunch of times, it's the best move in the world, but I just thought physical moves were classified as moves that make contact, and the physical moves that don't are just anomalies. That's why I define physical moves as moves that make contact in my Top 10 Underrated Pokemon Editions video. But there are a ton of physical moves that don't touch, like Bullet Seed and Mud Bomb, but what makes physical moves physical isn't contact, but rather the fact that their power is dictated by the Pokemon's physical strength, not mental or elemental strength. While Rock Slide doesn't make contact, the move is initiated by the Pokemon's physical strength, and it's defended by the opponent's physical defenses. I mean, that's why it's called physical moves and not contact moves. Saying all of this out loud makes me realize how stupid I was in the past. Number 3. Route 113 isn't the only route in which there is falling ash. Well first let's make sure you understand that ash from the nearby Mount Chimney falls over Route 113. And up until 4 years ago, I thought that Route 113 was unique for that fact. I acknowledged how I thought this beautiful spectacle was exclusive to Hoenn in my video about Hoenn music, but this was before I was aware of Route 227, in which volcanic ash falls from the nearby Stark Mountain. It's, it's a cool mountain, you should check it out. Very nice music. Number 4. Atsuko Nishida didn't design Eevee. In a recent video, I mentioned how Atsuko Nishida, the artist that designed Pikachu, also designed Eevee. She didn't. The reason I thought so was a combination of three other true facts that I happen to know. The first is that she designed all the non-Gen 1 Eeveelutions that her favorite Pokemon seemed to be Eevee, and that Ken Sugimori has stated that he had trouble designing cute Pokemon for Pokemon Red and Green, and that Atsuko Nishida helped him do so by designing Pokemon like Pikachu. In reality, Motofumi Fujiwara designed Eevee and its Kanto evolutions. Fujiwara, Nishida, Sugimori, and Morimoto were the only four people to be credited as designing Generation 1 Pokemon. Number 5. Vikavolt carries Chargebug in its arms. In a video I made a while ago, I mentioned how I thought Vikavolts would pick up Chargebugs in their mandibles, you know, this big railgun mouth thing, and use them as battery packs. But now I realize that that's pretty dumb, because they shoot electricity out of their mouths, so having a Chargebug there would block the blast. Turns out they simply carry them in their arms, which is very efficient, better than my idea. Number 6. Sharpedo's mark isn't really a star. I mean, it could be a four-sided star, but I should be referring to it as a scar-like mark. It's not an actual scar, but it's based on a common visual trope in Japanese media in which a large sea creature has X-shaped marks from being hunted and participating in battles. This is something I actually addressed in a video I made years ago, but I remember misspeaking about this aspect in the past, so it's in the video. Number 7. 
Wishy Washy is based on a sardine. Now in this video on screen right now, I said Wishy Washy was an anchovy, but at the time I knew that its name was derived from the Japanese word for sardine, Iwashi. So did I lie to myself? What's going on? The problem is that I didn't know there was a difference between sardines and anchovies. I used to think anchovies were just smaller packed sardines, and since anchovies are smaller, more pathetic looking fish, I thought that's what a Wishy Washy was. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like it's about to cry. Number 8. Golbats are not rodents. In my second video, in which I defended unpopular Pokemon, I kinda insinuated that Golbat was a rodent. While I definitely don't think that Crobat itself and its pre-evolved forms are rodents, I did used to think that bats were rodents, like mice and squirrels. They're not. They're, they just aren't. That's, that's the end. Number 9. Masquerine's antennae have eye patterns on them. In my recent video on hidden Pokemon design choices, I expressed my love for the hidden eyeballs on Masquerine's wings that scare predators, but oops, those aren't wings. Those are antennae. Now I definitely knew that these tiny paper-thin diamonds are its wings. I've battled Guzma, I've seen his killer Masquerine flapping about. Now that's a Masquerine that deserves Intimidate. Number 10. Soak translates to waterlog. Okay, so this is actually my biggest blunder on this channel. Two years ago, I made a video titled Mistranslated Pokemon Moves, in which I described Pokemon moves with names that were significantly changed in English. I said the move Soak was originally waterlog in Japanese, which it was, but waterlogging is basically the act of saturating soil with water, which is basically soaking something, so the move didn't deserve to be in the video, because the English translation is similar. But that's not the big mistake. In that video, I described waterlogging as water torture. That's right. I confused waterlogging with waterboarding. I get comments every day correcting me. Here's what makes it worse. I knew the definition of both waterlogging and waterboarding. I just misunderstood what I read when I was researching for the video and got waterboarding in my head when I should have been thinking of waterlogging. I'm not a farmer. I don't think of these things every day. Well, I won't make that mistake ever again. And you won't either. Number 11. Knights fought snails in the margins of gothic manuscripts. Now what does this have to do with Pokemon and my past failures? Well this is less about something I got wrong, but rather something I omitted. In my video about extreme Pokemon evolutions, Gudra naturally came up, but I never correctly answered why a snail evolves into a dragon. Well we know the common tale of knights versus dragons, but in medieval manuscripts there were often tiny illustrations of knights fighting snails, which could have originally represented the much hated Lombards, or they could have been ancient memes. Anywho, it would make sense for a pivotal Pokemon in the only European based main game region to be a snail dragon, since both have beef with knights. Number 12. The elemental monkeys are partially based on Japanese delinquents. In my video defending unpopular Pokemon, I spent half of my time trying to show that while the simis don't look that great, they at least have very fleshed out designs based on their origins, the three wise monkeys that speak no evil, hear no evil, and see no evil. But while that is true, their origin is even deeper than that. I originally wanted to add this info into the video, but the section about these monkeys was already long, and I didn't think the origins I'm about to explain were fully fleshed out, but they definitely are. The simis are three wise monkeys monkeys that have embraced American-inspired subcultures, which ended up making them fail the tenets that they tried to uphold in their pre-evolved state, visually at least. Simi Sage, which represents speak no evil, looks like a Yankee, which are Japanese delinquents usually portrayed as being rude and foul-mouthed, you know, speaking evil and such. Pansir, which represents hear no evil, evolves into Simisir, which is based on Bosuzoku, bike gangs who customize their rides and purposely make tons of noise by removing the mufflers on their vehicles. Simisir even looks like he's holding high handlebars and its tail looks like exhaust smoke. The fur around its neck even resembles the fur collar on a biker's leather jacket. And my least favorite of the three, Simipor, which used to see no evil, only cares about its appearance now that it's based on Gyarus. A subcategory of Gyarus are Kogars, very material girls that wear excessively short schoolgirl skirts and relatively unconservative hairstyles. It's actually a very tragic tale of three monkeys who are trying to be good but are overcome with temptations and sin. I kind of feel bad for ragging on them now. Number 13. There are no otters in Oshawa, Canada. In a video I made a long time ago, I said that Oshawa's name could have been derived from Oshawa, Canada, which I claim to have many otters. It doesn't. I don't even think there's one there. I was, I was just being an idiot. Number 14. Not all dark types are evil. In my video about misunderstood Pokemon, I mentioned how I thought all dark types were mean-spirited and malevolent, with the exception of Absol. This idea got into my head because of how the dark type is called the evil type in Japan. But I already knew when I said it that not all dark types are evil, but I definitely thought that they were all unpleasant to be around. But by now you should know that I don't think that way anymore, because I'm assuming that you've seen one of my best videos titled Which Pokemon is the Most Evil? 
In that video, I ruled out a bunch of dark types and even mentioned how some are pretty nice, like how Pangoro and Alolan Muk are very friendly. Some non-dark types are actually evil, like Gengar. In the video, I explained how most dark types just do violent things for survival or because they're just not intelligent enough to know that what they're doing is bad. Watch that video for the complete story. Number 15. Wildfires can be good. So this final fact isn't one which I got wrong, but rather another major angle and perspective to something I said. In a video I mentioned before, I concluded that Thunderous is a pretty bad dude because it goes around shooting lightning causing forest fires. But a bunch of people postulated that Thunderous isn't evil because wildfires can actually help clear out brush and fertilize his soil, allowing for the birth of some species of plants. Forest fires seem to be part of the natural cycle that Thunderous is facilitating. And just like how I deemed that evil Tal isn't evil because death is part of the natural cycle, Thunderous shouldn't be considered evil too. It's a very well made argument, but I could counter it with the following. Thunderous isn't intentionally trying to do good. Landorus is actually the one that is using Thunderous's destruction as an opportunity to regrow areas. Unlike Eveltal, Thunderous isn't throwing lightning for protection or even survival, like how Eveltal instinctively sucks in surrounding life so it could live directly continuing the balanced cycle of life and death alongside Xerneas. Thunderous seems to be way more intelligent than Eveltal, so it should know that what it does is harmful to peeps and pokes, which the game says it is. Landorus even tries to chase it out and calm Thunderous down as it rampages, but it's open for interpretation. The point is, my word isn't as strong as I made it out to be when I mentioned this fact. But I solemnly swear that liking this video is the best option if you enjoyed, and subscribing, if you haven't, is the right thing to do. Make sure to check out the description for links to the music I use, the t-shirts I made, my Patreon where you can get cool rewards, and my Twitter which you need to follow if you're a fan of True Green 7. I'll see you guys very soon.